Hi guys, how are you? This is Anna. Oil is the name of Yeshua. I'm going to be posting a video that is a little bit longer. And in it, I'm giving you a briefing of overall prophecies that Lord Yeshua HaMashiach has given me. Others were reminder of prophetic warnings that will become brothers and sisters um, will become forgive me about that i got distracted because of this weird thing pop up pop, popped up anyway so first things first let's start from the beginning hi my name is anya oil is the name of yeshua is the name of this channel thank you for subscribing thank you for being here as you know, first and foremost, all of you are welcome here. This channel is for no matter who you are. I don't consider it as having any kind of enemies. I don't know many people. I went from uh, being a social butterfly um, to knowing everyone to not knowing anyone because we parted ways. But I'm not going to get into this. I want you to watch this longer video. And the video will have uh, towards uh, the second part of the video... We're going to go over more specifically uh, just about over 60. Well, I'm going to give you just about any and all verses I know on the Holy Spirit. The handful of most important ones, I will quote them to you. I will still provide you the rest of the scriptures. So if you're interested in knowing who the Holy Spirit is, we're, we're, please listen to that longer video. In the background throughout, from now on, for, if you're not going to see my face, you will be seeing, brothers and sisters, um, a presentation of pictures. And or as I will be speaking, I will be giving you a variety of pictures for you to look at. I want to mention before we're going to discuss uh, Today, right now, I'm going to discuss real fast with you an encouraging message, an encouraging message that will consist a reminder of who the Holy Spirit is in you and why you must believe and trust that you are safe forever and ever. But that also that our covenant where we are saved by grace through faith is a free gift of salvation from our Heavenly Holy Father. But as it is a free gift of salvation, guys, we cannot be, we cannot be, deceived that people who have wicked hearts or people who have not wicked hearts but people who have who become deceptive after they've been saved that they need to understand that um, as this may not apply to you but we need to this is a good message to know and understand and again I, I'm trying to tippy toe around the what words I'm gonna use please forgive me I speak multitude of languages and and I speak and understand and I'm fluent in majority of them i understand way many more but the important thing is that we all number one must be must trust our heavenly holy father and yeshua jesus in who the holy spirit is number two that holy spirit was given to us forever as it is written in book of john chapter 14 verse 15 to 16 i want you to understand that the greatest commandment is love why because lover covers all iniquity love in other words covers all our sins and given that you understand that God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, Spirit of Wisdom, in the book of Proverbs, explains to us that loyalty is better than sacrifice. And then if you take into consideration that love is the greatest commandment out of the Ten Commandments that we must still obey while we operate in faith, where I repeat, we are saved by grace through faith, but all of that is only valid when it's activated, brothers and sisters. I repeat, and we all need to get there to understand that very well in love. In other words, many people who've been saved, there's a handful of people, and I'm sure you all have witnessed that, where people are teaching, teaching, teaching something, certain topics, and they were saved and within a week or two they literally go online and start teaching they open up their ministries they open up their prophetic ministries prophetic schools they charge astronomical exuberant amounts of money for their prophecies uh, prophetic schools and of course not any of those things has our heavenly holy father or our savior yeshua jesus christ of nazareth has uh, commanded prophets are if not born prophets are ordained 
appointed. And then it is Heavenly Holy Father who he personally goes before those prophets and he creates a testimony after testimony, evidence upon evidence that this particular person is a true prophet of the Most High God. He has done this in my case. And many of you out there, you know that I'm the real deal. You know what is the highest level of testimony on earth. You know this from the scriptures under New Covenant where the highest level of testimony, Yeshua tells us, is God the Father's testimony. So if you, for example, work on Bible codes and you know of particular people and or you, you were seeking them out by first and last names or whatever information you were provided with, and you found out what the truth is. Um, in majority of cases, it's not good to obviously reveal what who that person is. But within a close circle of friends where our own church is concerned, where people can be trusted with certain level of information, that information should be taken seriously into consideration because when we we are all awaiting now manifestation of the end of days Elijah. This has to do with the the two solar eclipses we had uh, since August 21st, uh, 2017 to then after that we had, remember, four, four lunar eclipses. Finally, April 8th, 2024, we had the letter Tav, which is the less Hebrew alphabet letter solar eclipse. Thus, together, we created uh, something to that effect. Let me just show you right here. Praise be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we're discussing the Holy Spirit today just for a few minutes but the sign of Jonah guys the sign of Jonah of the letter Tav is something that each person each one of you still has to do you still have to go repent and lament for it and the country of the United States why because even though that sign is second heaven may be gone just as the eclipse is over April 8th 2024 I repeat that whole thing Seven years of plenty, now the seven years of famine, seven years of famine of the word of God, and seven years of famine, famine, famine of food, famine of water, eventually that it will be made manifest, not just obviously in the United States first, as the United States of America uh, was chosen as that evil I should say the word was used, wicked, evil, wicked generation. As Yeshua told us, I think it was in the book of Matthew chapter 24, but also book of Matthew chapter 12, when someone asked, uh, one of the apostles asked Yeshua, well, what will be the sign of your coming? So you need to hear me now what I'm saying. They're asking him, Master Yeshua, what will be the sign of your soon return or your coming? Yeshua says, I'll tell you, there will be no sign given to this wicked generation but the sign of Jonah. So now, consider who received the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah, as you see it on the screen, received the United States of America. This sort of speaks spiritual, if we might. Where, of course, the Jews, we who are grafted in on the spiritual wine, this is why it, who is Jesus, Yeshua, we join in not only spiritual Israel for Yeshua was and is a Jew, the 12 apostles were and are Jews. Uh, they are the foundation of our faith. Yeshua, Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith. I repeat, given that you remember that we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh, gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Right? That's, a, that's what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. So, for all of you, even if you're listening to this now or later, even a year from now, two years from now, still consider that this spiritually, this sign of Jonah will never go away because the sign of Jonah is to the United States first, but it's to Canada, to Mexico, it's to Israel as a country and us, spiritual Israel, the bride of Christ, the one big church of the Most High Yah that consists of seven smaller churches where our leadership must, brothers and sisters, get together and do as God the Father commands. I do not want you to mourn as it is written right here 
in Matthew 24, 30, where it says, Then the sign of a son of a man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the son of a man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This will be for the great day of the Lord. Before the great day of the Lord, brothers and sisters, I believe there is some there. I call it a rescue mission. I'm working on it still spiritually, but there is a great day of the Lord. And in that long video, I tell you about the great day of the Lord and I give you scriptures. And I also go over very briefly just to give you hints of what I'm going to republish. Very briefly, go giving you instead of speaking my own words, I say in my own words, one or two sentences. And then I go, brothers and sisters, to what the sovereign lord has showed me what he has showed me will be the all the prophetic warnings that were warnings will now be made manifest into judgments and because as you see on the screen this is the rod of iron a type of rod of iron the rod of iron is that we received that word that prophecy that he, the word of god also gave us gave me praise be to yeshua jesus hallelujah to the word of yahweh word of god yeshua we glorify you we praise you thank you for letting us know for you let your holy divine will know to your servants the prophets first for the lion has roared who will not fear will you not fear will you not take heed to the warnings that the lord is telling us of course you will because the rod of iron, brothers and sisters, in not so many words, is basically earth and basically seven different planets. So imagine earth and you have I don't know which ones, but you have Earth plus six planets, and two of them should be a little bit slightly tiny bit to the side, which goes in, and I explain this in, in, in you know, goes into other studies of how Yeshua even died. And for those of you who are studying Spirit of Prophecy, Spirit of Prophecy, the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a huge reminder, please ask for the Spirit of Prophecy, because it's the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your wise virgin, you must pick up your own cross and carry it and follow Yeshua, wherever he's going. You must conquer any and all fear, all for the supreme glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son. We, Yeshua says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The great exodus is coming. I explain all of that in that longer video. I also gave you a few verses for all just to, for varieties of different prophecies. He gave it to me. And basically, I'm giving you in it dates, uh, specific dates and times, which is a gold mine. Why? Because it shows a timeline of when they were given to me four years ago, some five years ago, some three years ago, and some just a year and a half ago and we had for some a one-year warning like on the rod of iron we had a year warning the year was up between mid-february to mid-march and i knew that spiritually before the rod of iron will manifest spiritually i knew that the lord is establishing me officially as someone whom he desires to speak through his holy divine will to be made known to the church to to other to the leadership of our churches, whether you're young or old or new, um, basically he calls me the mouthpiece of the Lord. I also uh, deliver messages regarding our covenant. No, I'm not the messenger of the covenant. However, however, anything from warnings, prophetic warnings to actual prophecies to step-by-step -step instruction on what the Lord Yeshua desires, brothers and sisters, to see us perform because he has returned with that rod of iron not just spiritually which is not to go away till the end of days till the last ball of wrath is poured out upon this earth this rod of iron I, I, especially while we're here as his children he wants us for this rod of iron brothers and sisters to protect us to comfort us as it is written according to psalm 23 and of course he rules all the nations with this rod of iron which is in psalm number two and of course in isaiah 28 we know that the rod is something that can also we can be corrected with and of course if you want to be god the father's gold as it is written in zechariah chapter 13 which i read to you in the longer video he will test you and try his gold is tested and try and he will purify all of us he will purify you as 
silver is purified seven times because he's preparing us for the latter rain and he's at the same time right now outpouring the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit so much so we must know for sure who the Holy Spirit is we must know the power of gospel you must not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith to the Jew first and then to the Greek for in it the righteousness of Yahweh is revealed through faith for faith as it is written to the one who is righteous will live by faith and you my beloved you will live by faith because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has showed it to them these people are without an excuse for though they knew God as God the Father Yeshua as the Son because God the Father is the head of Jesus Yeshua is the head of the church they did not honor him as God or give him thanks or give him glory and honor but they became futile in their thinking and in their senseless minds they their senseless minds I'm reading here in book of Romans chapter 1 by the way verse 21 that their senseless minds were darkened claiming to be wise they became fools it says here again I'm in book of Romans chapter 1 verse 22 now verse 23 and they exchanged the glory of immortal Yahweh immortal God God the creator for images resembling a mortal human being or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles therefore God gave them up in their lust of their hearts to impurity and to the degrading of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this reason god gave them up to degrading passions and so on so forth so you can go and and finish reading this on your own time then uh, Romans chapter 2 addresses the righteous judgment of the most high god which is of course he gave all the mean and power and authority over all judgments to yeshua jesus christ of nazareth and here it says uh, romans 2 6 for he will repay according to each one's deeds to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor in immortality he will give eternal life while for those who are self-seeking and who obey not the truth but wickedness there will be wrath and fury there will be anguish and distress for everyone who does who does evil the jew first and also to the greek but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good to the jew first and also to the greek for yahweh god shows no partiality so we as the hearers of the law hear references only even though we are under grace because may i remind you that our new covenant has four official names one of them is the law of faith which is in romans 3 27 romans 8 2 law of a spirit where it clearly the two first sentences of the first book of the book of romans chapter 8 clearly distinguishes old covenant called the law of sin and death versus second official name for our new covenant called the law of the spirit and of course our new covenant can also be called the law of christ and the law of the truth so you it has nothing to do with the old covenant that not only the ten commandments that still we must obey today of course and out of them uh, there's two most important commandments one worship our god the father uh, and have no false idols before him and second commandment commandment is to love one another forgive one another and of course then out of those two yeshua tells us as he told his apostles that love is the greatest commandment because love covers all sins all iniquity okay so remember guys from jews comes salvation we cannot be confused about it today's message is to encourage you i'm going to give you a couple of words that god also gave me i'm just going to put going to put it all out there because when i put them insert them in longer videos i don't think many of you receive that and you need to be encouraged because many of you 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 have received spirit of prophecy and the sovereign lord is telling me they don't know they already have it he wants you to be sure that you have it and in order to know that you have it ask as yeshua says and you shall receive so ask for the spirit of prophecy uh, again in the book of revelation chapter 19 verse 10 yeshua tells us what that is that is a testimony of Yehoshua HaMashiach, testimony of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
to know him as your savior, as your Mashiach Messiah. So knowing what a lamp is and what oil is, what a, I address this in a longer video, please, you must study that on your own, but I, I give you all the answers already. It's in the longer videos. Just real quickly, a lamp is your human spirit. It's, the answer is in Proverbs 20, verse 27, what an oil is. It's in First Song of Solomon, third verse. Quote, for thy name is fragrant oil poured forth, and this is why the virgins love you. End of quote. So, do not be only hearers of the law, meaning our new covenant, the law of faith, the law of the spirit, but, all, but be the doers of the law, because only those will be justified in the eyes of God. So, do not be hokti, boastful, 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 <laughs> envious. Do not call, be the cause of a strife or deceit or craftiness. Do not be insolent, uh, puffed up, rebellious towards anyone or faithless and especially heartless, ruthless or faithless. Because anyone who practice such things, uh, but going back to Romans chapter 1 verse 28 to 32, anyone who practices such things deserves to die. It says here, this is a decree, guys. Yet they not only do those things, then Jesus says here, but they even applaud others who practice such things. And again, this goes into God announcing his judgments and how God is darkening people's First of all, people will cause their own hearts to go dark, number one. But eventually, of course, by doing these things, they will allow certain entities into their lives. This is why Yeshua was teaching through the apostles and himself. Hey, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But what you must understand today is what? That Yeshua just conquered them all and he rules them all. He is above them all. And that is, for example, in Colossians chapter 2, verse uh, 10 in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 it clearly states uh, they tell us right Jesus Yeshua through that Holy Spirit tells through the apostle that he himself has disarmed all principality and powers for all eternity and he publicly eternally shamed them now write it down you must know Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20, particularly verses 18 to 20. That is where your spiritual power and authority lays. Colossians 2, 10, 2, 14, and 2, 15 separately and are quoted as uh, uh, however you want it. When you're going to, eventually you have, this is a time where you have to learn to fight. And you need to understand that because we are uh, justified brothers and sisters, God who has proven that he himself is righteous, that he justifies any of us who has faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. So you must have faith in Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of the scriptures. And then, as Yeshua says, you know the Son, you know the Father. So God has put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies anyone who has faith in Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth. So, and then in Romans 3.25, that's where we, I am in Romans chapter 3 towards the end of it, the first name of our official name of our covenant is mentioned law of faith now because we're all in abrahamic seed you must understand beloved brother beloved sisters and listen to me that you after you as a gentile remember you never knew the law of sin and death consisting of 613 as i call them quote unquote pomegranate laws you never knew them you never knew them so don't go especially if you were born a gentile and you grew up a gentile even if you know your bloodline today don't go parading as a Hebrew as a Jew because you are uh, making uh, defending you possibly if in, in if a situation arises difficult for the advocate the Holy Spirit and other spiritual appointed intercessors so um, not much difficult but you need to because you need to understand that 
none of that matters whether you're a Jew or Gentile right now. And we are definitely in the end of days. And it doesn't matter because neither there is neither a Jew nor a Gentile. There's neither a man or a woman. There, none of the, there's neither rich or poor. None of those things ultimately will matter. What matters is the purity of your heart and whether or not, first and foremost, you have trust and believe in who Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is as the name above all names. And then repentance through the name above all names, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in a camel-like, meek and humble position. That must, that must have taken place in order for you to ask for the Holy Spirit. So then you ask for the Holy Spirit. As you're going to find out in a moment, as I'm going to tell you, you will receive that immediately. Why? Because you ask. So the same way, please consider asking for the spirit of wisdom. And if you already ask for the spirit of wisdom, then ask for the spirit of prophecy. And again, spirit of prophecy will be a process as you will be spending your time even more so to get that your personal oil you need to go get your own oil spiritually because you're making by spending time with Yeshua God the Father through the Holy Spirit you are getting your own oil as a wise virgin into your own lamp your human spirit God the Father well Yeshua Jesus the name above all names knowing him intimately he pours oil into you and it comes in different variations and levels but your lamp is full and you must refill that lamp because you're using it every day if you were to turn on the lamp and put oil in it and you had it on for six hours throughout the night and we are children of the day we sleep at night but let's say you have to that time is getting dark right now we it's it this right we are in the, uh, in the we are in the we are witnessing great apostasy we are witnessing the great falling away and we know that, that the great day of the lord will not come unless we will witness the great apostasy the great falling away and the man of sin must uh, will be will be named right the scriptures tell us about that uh, in some other teaching anyway point being is we are all justified by faith this is why it's called the law of faith in romans 3 27 just real quickly and we're gonna move in quickly to the happy good words happy message for all of you use romans 8 1 8 2 where it says quote therefore is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus Yeshua HaMashiach. For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has set you free. Has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Now, write it down. This is a perfect verse that proves that our new covenant has a name, a name where the word law is in it. So for people who don't want to let go of the word law, I've made a video for you many times over a period of probably year, year and a half, but every now and then I tell you how the word law is used as a singular word towards just the Ten Commandments, particularly when Paul and Peter, I notice, are comparing and contrasting the covenant. Did you notice that? And or when they mention the old covenants, it's called the law. When it's, the way they discuss the, the new covenant, also it's the law. And so when you read a verse after verse, scripture after verse, scripture, and they discuss three different things, and they compare and contrast them, and they only use the word law, and that's in the book of Romans, that's in the book of Galatians, Colossians, here and there. It's confusing, don't you think? So you have to pay attention based on the context, background of an entire even chapter, of that particular sentence which may be a precept even it's so imperative to comprehend which law are they talking about because this is why people are so confused trust me this was done on purpose now be aware of that warning how the word law is used as just law for all three things and especially when paul and peter are discussing them. Keep in mind that Paul and Peter were both discussing the same Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, they had a disagreement. Move on from that. Within it is a lesson for us in days to come. They were, they love Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, very, very much. And remember, all 12 apostles were and are part of the 12 semi-precious stone steps towards the 12 gates are in New Jerusalem, the holy city that is, unquote, unquote, Yeshua tells us in the book of Revelation, represents not only the wife of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that has made herself ready, but he tells us she is eternally holy, eternally free. Eternally holy, eternally free. 
And of course, New Jerusalem has the 12 gates represent of 12 tribes of Israel through which you when you're grafted into the divine who is Yeshua Jesus you join the commonwealth of Israel and the spiritual Israel whose foundation and cornerstone is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and of course the 12 apostles 12 apostles are the foundation of our faith therefore there are the 12 stepping stones towards the 12 gates in the holy city called New Jerusalem. You to learn more about New Jerusalem, you can go to the book of Revelation and read book very short but awesome, amazing, amazing prophecies that Yeshua and his angel uh, discusses uh, with John the Revelator when John was remember on the island of Patmos, he received the uh, thirty some years later after Yeshua left the earth and went back to heaven because he came from heaven. That he wasn't reincarnated. He was never before on earth as a human being. He was born on earth, brothers and sisters, as a holy human being without a sin through a miraculous conception. We addressed that also in the longer video. Why well, that's important to know and understand in the latter days when you must def you must learn to defend the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. And you must learn to defend this covenant called the law of faith or the law of the spirit or... And of course, here where it's co our covenant is called the law of the spirit, it refers to what spirit? God the Father is a spirit? Yeah, there too. But it refers first and foremost to the Holy Spirit. This is the law of a spirit, the Holy Spirit. The covenant is all about Ruach HaKodesh and us being saved, brothers and sisters, right? So remember, we are saved by grace through faith and, and, and being pure, of a pure heart is of utmost importance. Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption and you are all, we are all called children of the Most High God because the Spirit of God, Abba Father, Spirit, Yeshua Spirit is the Holy Spirit, all in one. It, and it dwells within us. Therefore, we are called children of the Most High God. You, this is, you, you did not receive my brothers and sisters the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have to receive that spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, uh, you know, that Holy Spirit testifies for us as an advocate day and night. And I want you to understand, it will never leave you, it will never forsake you. But you must understand that the way you think must be changed. No matter what topic it is, Keep praying that Holy Father in the name of Yeshua will change the way you think. Pray to Yeshua Jesus also directly that he changes your thinking. Both things are correct. So with that being said, guys, please remember, do not mix the two covenants. We are all an Abrahamic seed. That the, for the promise that Abraham would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through. And here there is just the word, the law. And then it says, but, through, but it came through the righteousness of faith. And here's the warning. We're in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 14 now. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. Faith is nulled, nullified, annulled. And the promise is void. The enemy knows that. And is attempting to push many people who uh, were born Gentiles, became a Gentiles. Now they call themselves different names. And they uh, go choose and pick what they want to celebrate from 613 laws and i repeat we were reminded may i remind you this before we move on very important if you don't know yeshua jesus christ of nazareth intimately and you don't have that oil lamp filled with oil you don't have the extra vessels filled with oil may i remind you as i think it's in the book of you may be in colossians we are being told specifically None of those things. Don't let anyone shame you, brothers and sisters, in the matters of what you eat or what you drink, in the matter of Shabbat days, new moons, appointed feasts. Because even though the Lord Yeshua is the Lord over Shabbat, now I'm speaking. None of those things, guys, matter. If you don't know Yeshua HaMashiach intimately by spending time with him, he has to, he has to report each one of you to God the Father and his angels in a throne room in front of the 24 elders and the angels, especially the angels, it says in the scriptures, in front of, to God the Father in front of the, 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 the angels, that he knows you. And because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you are introduced, invited into this awesome, amazing covenant. And the, even though this salvation, offer of salvation, is for all and to all, 
maybe we must be aware of the, that we are in the end of days and that, as Yeshua said, two things, two different teachings, precepts. One, many are called but few are chosen for very specific assignments. But as long as you are saved, as long as you believe in Yeshua, Jesus, listen, as long as you, when you die, you go to heaven, that's all you should matter to you and or that you will enter through the gates of the holy city because that's where we will go to be protected from any and all wrath fury, eradication, level judgments that Yeshua Jesus will be pouring out upon the whole earth. And before then, we want to make sure that that rod comforts and protects us. The prophecy of the rod of iron that I told you was fulfilled August 28, 2024. So keep that in mind and tell others that that's a true deal. And even though the rod of iron is gone away from the second heaven, I think already, it's here, the rod of iron is here to stay because it's a physical weapon. And the rod of iron is, can mean many things. But one of the primary things, guys, it means it will blow your mind. And if Jesus, in accordance to Psalm number 2 and the book of Revelation, holds the rod of iron, do you understand that the rod of iron, I, and I spent some time explaining that also in that longer video, that in accordance, guys, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 verse 16, Jeremiah 51 verse 19, that the rod of iron is Abba, Father, Yahweh, God Almighty Himself. <sighs> Just mind-blowing. That, that it says in there, those two verses are written in exact word for word the same. And it says, it's Jacob's inheritance. Go read it on your own time. But what I'm saying is this. So when somebody will entice you to know the calendar and everything else, listen to me. You have the time. You still keep in touch with Yeshua on a regular basis. You feel like it's the right time. Go pray about it. Absolutely. You have the time. Go do it. Go study the calendar. Most definite. But remember, when you know the calendar, then you have to obey everything you know. You cannot deny that you know it. Are you aware of this? Remember what happened with Yeshua and the Pharisees, Sadducees, because they claimed to understand, because they claimed to know things. As Jesus said, they had no excuse. They had no excuse, guys. They had no excuse at all. Yeshua tells them, now because you told me, you understand and you hear me and you see me and you, or whatever he says, that, you, that they understood him. He says, now you have no excuse that, that, that you are sinning. Now you know you're doing evil. And of course, soon thereafter, if it, right around that time, he's being accused of being demon-possessed. So within it is a huge lesson. If whatever you're going to take upon yourself to study, to learn, make sure that it's a proof for your destiny, your calling with God the Father. Don't just do it. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, don't just do it because someone else is doing it. If it's meant to be, you'll, you'll come to you easily. You, you'll feel great about it. You're not going to be hesitant about any of its parts. And remember, only in the knowledge of our new covenant, covenant, as I told you, that saves lives. I repeat, the power of the gospel, it is what? It is the power of Yahweh for salvation to everyone who has faith. So never be ashamed of the gospel, brothers and sisters. If you come across the Jew, preach it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If you, you don't think you can preach to them, then see, feel them out what topic you can discuss. And, and, and maybe if you have known know some scriptures about it, see if you can f point out the Messiah in the book of Isaiah. Point him the Messiah in the book of Psalms. Because through King David, Mashiach, Yeshua, often spoke through King David and the spirit of wisdom and Ruach HaKodesh. Yeshua often spoke through King David. So guys, pray to have eyes to see. Pray to have ears to hear. We are living in the end of days. Time is it's amazingly scary sometimes, but we have to conquer any and all fear, all for the supreme glory of God the Father. Okay? As it is written in Ephesians chapter 1. Well, it depends on what Bible version you have. But guys, remember, where there is law, law, that law of 613 uh, commandments, that brings wrath. Where there is law, there is also, remember, a violation. 
But when there is no law, there is no violation. You have an excuse. I don't know. I didn't never had time to study it. I only spent time to study on who Yeshua is, and I obeyed Shabbat days. I kept my seventh day as holy. If you nothing else, don't be overwhelmed by the calendar, by running into things too fast, too prematurely, too early. Take your time. Jesus Yeshua must come first because He is the name above all names. That's why Jesus and the apostles, I repeat, were teaching. You know the Son, you know the Father. You know the Son, you know the Father. So as we all want to please the Lord, I'm sure of it. As you all want to be holy for He's holy, you already are. Because you believe on the one who saved you, who died on the cross for your sins and the sins of the world. When you were grafted onto that vine, Yeshua Jesus is the vine. Whether Jew or Gentile, remember you are holy for He is holy as God. Jesus is God. And the Word of God. And the one and only judge of all things seen and unseen. And he's here to judge the house of God, meaning us, the church. And that's what the rod of iron means. And that's what the sign of Jonah means. Again, I address the sign of Jonah yet again. If you haven't fasted and lamented, I keep repeating this because you need to do it for yourself, even if you're saved. And your key word is lamentation while you're fasting and praying. Praise be to Jesus. No food, no water, guys. No food, no water. Anyway, so let's go over this quickly again. Let's go into the happy messages. If it is the adherence of the law, meaning that old covenant law of sin and death, who are to be heirs, faith is annulled and the promise is void. For the law, that old covenant law of faith, law of sin, excuse me, law of sin and death, oh my gosh, for the law of sin and death brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there a violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all Abrahamic descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith in Abraham, for he is the father of us all. Amen. Okay, moving on. Remember, you are justified, purified, sanctified. This is why today you get on your knees. You show respect to God the Father. Show and fear God. Show Him respect. Know that Yeshua Jesus is one and only Shiloh. One and only the branch. Zema. There is no other. He, Yeshua Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is the Messiah who promised Messiah to the Jews first and then to the rest of us, the world. That was Yeshua Jesus and no one else, brothers and sisters. So remember, we have been all justified by, the, by His blood and we've been saved through Him, through Yeshua Jesus, from the wrath of God. Okay? This is why we're no longer subject to any of God the Father's judgments. And that is in the book of Romans, chapter 5. Verse, what is it? Verse 10, verse 9. Verse 9, so Romans 5, 9. But it, the chapter itself, the whole chapter is amazing. In book of Romans 6, 14, it, I love this verse and I tell you this verse all the time. Which says, for sin will have no dominion over you since you're not under the law, but under grace. Well, what law is it talking about? Our law, new covenant? No, the old covenant, the law of sin and death. So again, this was emphasized to me July 19, 2024 to remind you, keep reminding you about the deception behind the word law. All glory and honor be to Yeshua Jesus that he reminds us this. And again, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. If you want to prove to people that the word law is in the names, uh, in all four official names of our new covenant, please go to Romans chapter 8, chapter, verse 1 and 2. Again, it says in it, Therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life, so the law of the Spirit, that's a new name of our covenant, second new name for our official name for our new covenant of grace. For the law of the Spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And the law of sin and death is the name of, our, of the old covenant for which Yeshua fulfilled in the prophets. Quote, unquote, the expression is in Colossians 2, chapter 2, verse 14, nailing you to the cross. With the record of our sins and all the legal demands, all the spiritually legal demands that he came with, which means that if we were to die, if you wouldn't repent of your sins or you refuse to repent of your sins, if you reject the free gift of salvation, any such a person, unfortunately, guys, they will go to hell. 
That's just how it is. Then Satan, whether you are a believer, disbeliever, lukewarm, or whether you're New Age, whether you're Muslim, Catholic, Bukhurid, rejected, to know the Mashiach Yeshua intimately, given that you knew about it, of course, and you heard it, and God will make sure that everybody will hear the final message. And that time already begun now, as we're witnessing great apostasy. I repeat, you need to understand that, that many are saved every day and we need to this as this covenant is offered to all guys remember no one can ever call you to live in the flesh because why the spirit of god's glory dwells within you anyone who doesn't have the holy spirit of yeshua which is the holy spirit which is also the spirit of god the father remember does not belong to yeshua therefore does not belong to god the father yahweh i repeat to all the jews out there you need to repent on your knees in a gimel camel like quote unquote camel, gimel, humble, meek and humble position. You know why? Through Yahushua HaMashiach, the name above all names, you can only repent. There is no other there is no other new spiritual law. He is the promised Mashiach Messiah. He was and is a Jew. So with that being said, I love you all, Jews and Gentiles alike. It doesn't matter who you are. Remember, stay within the assigned ranks he gave to you. Even if you know your ranks, now new ranks, as God is giving out his positions of honor and authority, as he's prepping us, pre uh, training us, so that we can be ready to receive the overwhelming power of through God's grace, through Ruach HaKodesh, that will come upon many, many who are loyal, to the covenant and the blood of Jesus who are loyal to their brothers and sisters who've been loyal to and defended Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name above all names who've been honest who've been kind loving gentle so remember it pays to be obedient no matter who you are to heavenly holy father and yeshua jesus christ of Nazareth, because this is why god the father is training so many of you right now all of us so that you can be prepared to receive the latter rain i want you to receive the latter rain all right moving on so read the bible every day guys read ask for your daily lessons pray their one and only prayer yeshua jesus was teaching to god the father which is in matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 12 and now the good news hallelujah all right so two weeks ago i received a word it's a hebrew word called basar and this is uh, 13 1 3 1 9 Hebrew strong school coordinates and the definition of the word is to bear tidings and this means the NASB translation and go uh, explains to us this means to bear good news to be a bearer of good news to bring the good news and I'm bringing to you good news I proclaim to you the glad tidings please receive the good news I am here to proclaim to you brothers and sisters that our Lord is very shortly to appear in this realm and shortly may be another three years it may be another four and a half five and a half years he's telling me tell them to be ready because ultimately the great apostasy prophecy has been already fulfilled so you got to be out on the lookout to the messenger of the covenant to someone who's announcing preaching publishing good tidings good news step-by-step -step instruction on how to survive what was a warning prophetic warning and or prophecy that is about to be made manifest i repeat listen to me carefully the lion has roared lion king of lion of judah has roared who will not fear you must be a foolish person if you're not going to fear i'm warning everyone who has ears to hear you have to get down on your knees regard god the father is god show him fear of god is the beginning of wisdom ask for that wisdom and you will receive it ask for the spirit of prophecy and you will receive it and if you never ask for the holy spirit's holy spirit seal ask and you will receive it immediately and i'll show you why next word okay i was working on a lot of things and i was uh, uh, doing horrific spiritual warfare and the next word is and i'm gonna put some of those words up on the board for you 4130 greek strong school coordinates and i usually never look words up but those are were so repetitive guys so repetitive and here this means um to furnish to accomplish to fill to supply 
play though, play though. So 4130, Greek Strong's Concordance, verb, play though. Definition, furnish, accomplish, fill, supply, usage, I, f- I fill, fulfill, I complete. God was telling me how there's a 7,000 of you on earth right now. It is, you are like as if God loves us all the same. But there's people who have volunteered on very special missions to our Heavenly Holy Father. And then you who are of the, who are of the Church of Smyrna, you who are of the Church of Philadelphia, and all overcomers from all seven churches in general, that there's an overcomer from all seven churches already, and that God says, I will finish the good work that I started within you. You are my masterpiece. Do not be concerned that you have messed it up. Pick yourself up again. Dust yourself off and remember God is here for you, not against you. Yeshua is sent out to, pr- to proclaim these messages through the messenger. There's 7,000 here us on earth. We all, sp- we all overall know the same things, but some more than others will specialize in particular fields. Anything from overall, it's all about being God the Father's business. He's holy, de- fulfilling His holy divine will through the word of God's Holy Spirit guidance as He guides us, as the Holy Spirit guides us, because only, as you will hear in a few minutes, Holy Spirit only knows the mind of God. And only Holy Spirit can guide us towards the goals that Heavenly Holy Father wants to you to meet and to fulfill. So He's saying that some of you have been filled to the limit, to literally He has filled you to your truly human individual capacity of what you can he sees how you are persecuted especially to those of you who are persecuted you're persecuted because he has filled you up to what a human mind heart your human body can even handle as a man as a woman individually on what your capacity is and because he's in you so powerfully uh, not only with the inside of you my brother my sister remember is because the holy spirit also is resting upon you and he says that he will now from now on you will continue on working on all all the fulfillment he says quote unquote will be fulfilled and you are to be complete Think of yourself as you are as someone who is, is spiritually accomplished because he will continue on supplying you as you will continue on reading scriptures. He will be showing you now things within whether it's that one, whether you have one talent, two talents or five talents. He will now help you identify to what those talents are more specifically because some people have one talent for example to have an anointed voice you can do anything from singing to public speaking to being an encourager to someone who uh, puts a, sh- a sheer fear of God into a person someone who can proclaim God's l- spiritual lessons um, you can I mean there's uh, endless possibilities anything that has to do with having a voice you can calm people down you can pacify you can be the nervous system of the church you can be the circulatory sister of the church you are that so this is just a many one of many examples of what just one gift of the holy spirit can mean through those gifts of course to the, again in the scriptures where it says gifts of the holy spirit you will not have You will not say to have an anointed voice, but it will tell you something like a gift of knowledge, a gift of understanding, a gift of speaking in tongues. Um, uh, Oh my goodness. Uh, Translating the tongues. Um, Manifestation of the spirit. A gift of miracles. A gift of what else it says in there. Um, uh, There's a few more, two or three more. My point is, Within, within, I'm trying t- to tell you that with your just having Holy Spirit, you, if you don't know, what, even though you know that our scripture tells us what the Holy Spirit gifts are, I repeat, let me just read it to you. God who activates all of those Holy Spirit gifts, brothers and sisters in everyone, and we are in the first book of Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Let's start at verse 7. So to each person is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good. And to another person is given, uh, uh, given, oh my gosh, I lost this page. To the one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, 
according to the same spirit so holy spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the workings of miracles and to another prophecy and to another the discernment of spirits and to another various kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues all of these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit meaning god the father chooses so I have another Bible, and in it, it says that uh, one it, in one, it's when God the Father, it sounded like, and I now forget which spirit God the Father was choosing the gifts, and I think God the Father was activating the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, while the Holy Spirit was choosing which gifts we receive, something to that effect. But still, if you understand in a moment, I'll give you the verse on who the Holy Spirit is. Holy Spirit is still Spirit of God the Father, Spirit of Yahweh, Spirit of Yeshua, all simultaneously, so... Again, it's not confusing. Just use the word spirit and everybody knows you, you're speaking either of God the Father and or Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter because both are correct. So remember that Holy Spirit is your Holy Spirit seal that you received upon your, your repentance after you proclaim your love, your belief, your trust in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died on the cross for your sins and the sins of the world. You believe that he's the only begotten son of the most high God who was risen from the death on the third day. You shall be saved. Believe that you will be not only justified and proclaim them with your mouth, you will be saved. And that's also Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. So as you can see, um, it's amazing. But notice that faith, just quick side note, that faith is also one of those gifts. It's a spiritual gift. Holy Spirit gifts. By the way, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's titled Spiritual Gift. So, again, gift of love is the most amazing, amazing uh, gift on its own. Why? Because, again, love is the greatest commandment. And I forget now where that verse is, but there is a verse where, guys, it says... Uh, well, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it says, Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, nor is it irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes in all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for, as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the knowledge, it will come to an end. So on and so forth. So then this goes into other gifts of prophecy in tongues, which many people out there are speaking wrong tongues. I mean, we're not going to discuss this right now. But that's a, that teaching is coming up too. So guys... If you have time, please go as for homework. Go read First Corinthians chapter 12. And prior to it, if you can, please read also the institution of the Lord's Supper, which is in First Corinthians chapter 11, verses um, 23 to verse 31, even 32, because many people, People are partaking in the eating of the body of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in an unworthy manner. They're drinking of his blood, of course, symbolically by drinking that wine or grape juice, which represents Yeshua's blood and an unworthy manner. And they will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord, Yeshua. They need to examine themselves and only then eat the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body meaning Yeshua's, excuse me, their own body, their own deeds, their own heart, their own mind. Remember, guys, serious stuff, serious stuff. I mean, go read it. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're in verses 27, 28, 29, 30. It says here, For all who drink and eat without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. Okay, and then it says in verse 31, but if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Verse 32, but when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Okay, so you need to understand that many people do not repent of their uh, wrongdoing, saying whatever, whatever they've done. Again, anyone who's technically saved under this covenant, just for the record, we consider them 
uh, God calls them that technically you cannot sin. So uh, for all the for races out there and or who's anyone who forgive me, I shouldn't have said that anyone who's carefully studying the covenant, you know that you cannot sin if you truly love Yeshua Jesus and you simply didn't know. And it's been, let's say, months or a year since you re re reanalyzed your deeds, your words to the people what you've done. And if you've taken communion, this is why you've experienced maybe that pain. Uh, and, and again, again, I, I can't say that, but because many people have done nothing wrong especially me and i'm experiencing horrific pain today so with this being said this this has to come from the lord okay if you did not so regard first your own actions and behaviors have you've been doing wrong against someone or something you shouldn't have but if god forbid you did please get on your knees and repent and only then then either i would repent of it anyway Get on knees and say, Holy Father, I want to make sure that I'm in perfect standing with you spiritually regarding the, the body and blood of my precious Messiah, Yeshua. Please show me if I've done anything wrong, if there's anything I could have done better. And if you think you've messed up somewhere, tell him. Tell him and discuss it, okay? And apologize for it. If you think apology, I would apologize. Don't discuss it, just apologize for doing wrong. And then go ahead, take communion on a Shabbat day at home privately. Or if you're going to the church, your ministry, please then take eat of the partake in the eating of the body of Christ and drink of the precious blood of Jesus and tell others, tell others of First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 30, 34. Very, very important. Many people, uh, well, read it you understand what the lord sometimes does to, for so that they would stop doing that some other people attend weddings and not weddings excuse me dinners and they get drunk that days and that's not appropriate either so again regard your actions and behaviors if you cannot wait for the shabbat dinner then eat something before going out before you go there with your friends and in moderation this is supposed to be a happy day every weekend shabbat day is for us to joy sing joyful songs to have a good time for our kids to play for our grandkids to play run around together together with others from nearby places villages cities whatever you gather together states and you're supposed to have fun but you got to keep it all under control because our god is the god of order and that's it. So examine yourselves and then only eat the eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Another word I receive for you guys to say. So remember, be confident God is finishing the good work in you. And remember, you are called. And this is another word. This is from long, 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 long ago. To all of you who the enemy is attacking you with, with these different weird accusations. L listen, you, just say, I am holy, sanctified purified by the blood of jesus christ of nazareth my savior i praise you yeshua jesus start praising and worshiping him then proclaim luke 10 verses 17 to 20 and the lord gives you 53 greek strokes concordance words hagnos which means to be free from ceremonial defilement you're holy you're sacred in god's eyes and this is uh definition it's free from ceremonial defilement holy sacred Usage originally in a condition prepared for worship, you are pure. But listen to how you what that means. That such a person is pure. I receive this, and you receiving this today. You are either ethically or ritually and ceremonially pure. You are also chaste. So praise be to you, Jesus. You are virginal, chaste, unadulterated. You are pure inside and out your heart is pure inside and out you are holy because you are uncontaminated you're undefiled from sin i.e without spoilation even within even down to the centers of one's being not mixed with guilt or anything condemnable praise be to jesus hallelujah you are for chaste free from sin innocent you are pure remember guys remember you can look all of those on your on your own time but i usually don't do this guys i don't give you any words but you need to god says he many many 
of you, you need to understand that you are that person. You truly have been doing everything he's asked you to do. And you've been attacked because you are, well, because you love the Lord so much. This is why you became an object of hatred. This is why they hate you. It's not that you've done something wrong. They've attacked you. It's because that you are pure. That's why. Next. Next word for... This is all for either all of you. All of those are for you. Or you know what's for you. 90. Greek strong concordance. Word is... Adiaphothoria. 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 So it definition means soundness, purity, usage, incorruptibility, soundness, integrity, purity. This is another word, guys, that I've received. Praise be to Yeshua Jesus. And of course, this is a, a noun, feminine. And so you it simply means guys that such a person it only has a one occurrence as being being absolutely uncorruptible god has tested you he tested your integrity he tested the integrity of your heart of your soul of your mind he tested you under very very horrific conditions of extreme stress you all know who you are. Maybe in some cases they even put their hands on you. There's few of those cases. The Lord has taken care of them all. They will never touch you again. Believe me. You are the light in the darkness. So the rest of you walk out from the darkness and walk towards the light. Because the hour is late and everything else is still moving behind the scenes. And people of this world do not know that. So it's for you to decide, go be in perfect standing, brothers and sisters, with Yeshua Jesus, Abba Father. Show God, give God the glory. Fear Him. Fear God the Father. Listen to me. You cannot lie to the Holy Spirit. No one can lie to the Holy Spirit, beloved brothers and sisters. You cannot lie to the Holy Spirit ever. And God gave me regarding those who are uh, done certain things. The word that he gave me for it is 42.29. Hebrew, strong school coordinates, and the word is mahach. And it says, definition of it is to wipe, to wipe out. Very serious stuff. So go read this on your own. I'm not going to discuss it. And the second one, second version of it is very concerning because... It means to obliterate someone from the memory, um, from under the heaven, um, from to blot a person's out name from the Lamb's Book of Life and or from under the heaven, from off the face of the earth, from their remembrance, for their transgressions. To be such person will be remembered no more by God. So... Another version of, of that is to that whoever it is, a being or a human, that God says that blood out is combined with um, as in defending us who are holy righteous and then for those who are unrighteous and wicked and evil uh, it show it gives me here a lot of verses again this is the Lord speaking not me and here I'm just letting you know the word blood it, the, this means to blot out someone off the face of the earth as in to exterminate and or all existing things of evil that are against his son Yeshua Jesus Christ of Nazareth who are against Yahweh God the Father who are against those who are for example uh, whatever he says to do and people who are coming on I don't want to say the rest I have absolutely no fear. This means strong, exhaustive concordance says to abolish, blot out, destroy, full of marrow, put out, reach on to utterly wipe away. And again, it's it depends what is the verse. This is first from Genesis six seven. So again, forty two twenty nine mahach means to abolish, but it means to wipe out, to wipe out, to blot it out, to erase, to cancel, to obliterate. A lot of these uh, in accordance to his stroke, stroke of his arm, uh, the arm of the Lord. 
is Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It can be done also with the rod of iron, of course. So remember, the rod of iron is Yahweh, God the Father. And he's giving this to me, uh, I think this was about three months ago or so. About three months ago or so. Um, again, this is for those whom he, you know... This refers to what you need to understand is this ties into all already announced judgments against those who've done who've done very disgusting, devious, devious things, and they've done them for a long, long time. This ties into this can go back thousands of years. So I guess the uh, also can go back to brothers and sisters, even some uh, prophecies regarding um the supernatural realm, I believe, majority is for the supernatural realm, if just for them. And because he has addressed a handful of them, my understanding was and is, and they must obey. They are commanded immediately to obey. If they will obey, God will, my understanding is, leave them alone for a time. But they cannot put their hands on God's holy people in any shape or form. They're messengers. We are messengers. And there's nothing, guys, that we've done to deserve this. So remember, the supernatural realm, think of it mostly and at worst for those who disobey the warning of Revelation chapter 22 and add on to the words of the book of that prophecy, book of Revelation, or take away from the book of prophecy of the book of Revelation chapter 22. Read that warning in there, 22, 18. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. You must, must understand and memorize it and tell someone else about that warning guys with that being said finally remember you are not only spiritually the com the commonwealth of israel you are physically the commonwealth of israel do not discuss any topics of israel god is retrieving the land that's briefly mentioned in the book of um what was in the book of joel chapter 2 verse 30 31 he's restoring the land that was divided and he tells you in it what it was divided for. He tells you for young boys and girls, literally for wine, for some wine, to sell them into slavery and to other things. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, you need to understand that some things go back thousands of years, even way before Yeshua was born on earth. So before, I know things look weird. I know they don't look good. But you go get on your knees and or seek the scriptures regarding that area, what happened in the past. Because you need to understand what happened in the book of Abadai. You need to understand what happened in to Nineveh. We, that eclipse of April 8th, 2024, has to do all with Nineveh. The, have you read, read the book of Nahum? Which is all about Nineveh. But God the Father, through the word of God, Yeshua, is telling Nineveh what, he's, what sin they've committed. Go read it. Go read it. And he tells them, because you disobeyed me. This is another time where they're addressed. So there's two versions, when they obey and when they disobey. When they obey is in the book of Jonah. That Very quick to read book of Jonah. Please read it and do as he commands you to do. Because you all must obey if you're part of the church. And you must be part of the church. Because there is no other followers of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But the, by belonging to the church. So, final word that you guys receive, praise be to Jesus, is word 3022. Those of you who have been suffering for the name of Yeshua Jesus, suffering literally physically, whether from sickness, illness, and you know you felt for a while like it was for the cause. And maybe you ask to carry your own cross. But this, is, this is what you are. This is what you are. You are 3022 Lyakos. Definition, it means to be bright and white. Usage, white, bright, brilliant. And this is, again, Greek strong school cordons. So 3022 Greek strong school cordons, Lyakos. And it means uh, white, bright, brilliant, to be brilliant, white. It, it refers to brothers and sisters to be dazzling with beautiful, white, powerful, most heavenly, powerful state of grace that manifests through us, God's children. When it refers to your spiritual garments, the garments also that angels have and of those who will be priests after the order of Melchizedek. 
to Yehoshua HaMashiach who will be at his right hand in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for all eternity and of those who are exalted to the splendor of heavenly state praise be to Jesus those who are shining in those beautiful white garments that that are just it's a it's a beautiful state of mind body soul spirit and spiritual especially spiritual spiritual state so praise be to Jesus remember this comes from look light and means white white so go read this on your own remember this still doesn't take away from you guys that you are a wise virgin and an oda in the book of proverbs chapter 31 there's an oda to um to a wise wise wife the wife what is the wife the wise wife he tells there that she wears uh uh, purple, purple refers to royalty, but as the overall spiritual state of mind, body, soul, spirit of your soul, of your heart, of your soul, spirit, and heart is that whiteness, brightness that Yeshua Himself only has, for He has that type of gown and His angels. That's what it's all about. While he, on what you're gonna be wearing on Earth during one thousand years, you're gonna be wearing purple. You most likely you're gonna if you're a female and you're gonna be let's say one of the the queens to the queen, uh, the queen of Zion, the wife of Yeshua Mashiach. We are all brides of Christ, male, female, and Yeshua is looking for His right right hand man, males, and so is uh, so is the wife but we are all the bride of christ so again those are all positions up for grabs and this is why you have been tested and tried and this is why we were commanded to run the race and to work out our salvation with fear and trembling that's just the truth my brothers and sisters all right next stage who is the holy spirit i have given you all the verses for the most part it's a again third person they call it there's a aleph bet Gimel. So Aleph, the first Hebrew alphabet letter, represents God the Father. It means uh, in Hebrew, a strength of, of, of a strength of an ox, a strength of Yahweh, uh, to be the beginning. It also means the beginning when Yeshua says, and or God the Father says, I am the beginning and an end. I am Aleph and Tav. I am Alpha and Omega. That's what it means. And that's what that eclipse, Aleph and Tav, meant on the continental United States of America, as you know, again, from August 21st, 2017 to April 8th, 2024, over the past seven years, which represented the seven years of plenty throughout their four lunar eclipses. Other signs and wonders were in the second heaven. We went over that all of them, as I showed you many pictures of what those signs and wonders were regarding the red blood moons, the lunar eclipses, the wolf moons, regarding the signs and wonders of just saying completely, I mean, unbelievable shapes in the clouds and and things that look like the world was uh, rolling over upside down i mean crazy stuff and i've posted a lot of stuff has to do with wormwood of course planet x the second sun and i think that's the sun s-u-n of righteousness rising up in that is mentioned in book of i think was it zechariah I think it was in the last chapter of the book of Zechariah. I quote that and I explain it to you briefly. I point that out to you guys what it is because um, I thought it was per misspelling. No, it says S-U-N of righteousness. My point is there's so many awesome things to study, guys. And we have to all help and assist one another in whatever you are good at. Write it down in the comment section. You can teach us something. Please tell us about it. Thank you, Jesus, for my brothers and sisters. It is, I'm sorry guys, it's in the book of Malachi, it's in the book of Malachi, and that is in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, S-U-N of righteousness, and you shall, you shall go out leaping like halves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for there will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. And then he says, I'm sending to you my servant, the prophet. Then we're going to verse 5. We're in Malachi 4. Lo, I will send you the prophet of Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of their parents to their children and the hearts of their children to their parents. So that I will not come and strike their land with a curse. In Malachi chapter 3. God says, tells us what? Yeah, the great I am, Yahweh, I praise you. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. 
The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. It says here, in whom you delight. So whoever this person will be, it will be the bearer of good tidings, good news. It will be uniting the church, uniting the brothers and sisters, mothers with fathers, sons with fathers. A messenger of the covenant. Anyway, go read it on your own time. I am. I read. The, I read the primary verses out of that message because I receive a message regarding this too. I will make a video on this. We gotta be out on the lookout for people who simply have wisdom, and when they speak, we gotta listen. But only after you spend your time with Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, first. So. Holy Spirit, again, you know, Holy Spirit is given to us forever, for eternity. Let's move on. I'm going to skip all the verses I've given from the Old Testament. I'm going to skip the majority of the verses from the New Testament, but we will go to the very important verses from the New Covenant. Luke 11, chapter 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Holy Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? John chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Quote, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit, meaning Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 16, very important scripture. It's a precept, divine law under new covenant. So re remember what I told you about the word law, okay? Law, why? Because it cannot be broken. It cannot be altered. It cannot be changed. It's eternal. Eternal for the next 1,000 years. This cannot be ever broken, altered. We have power and authority through the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, over any and all spirits, which is mentioned in Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20, where your spiritual power and authority is mentioned. How do you have that power and authority? By having Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, sealed upon you. By believing in who Yeshua Jesus is, first and foremost. Because you repented of your sins and you asked for Ruach HaKodesh. You have a spirit of Christ. You represent Jesus Christ. You become Christ-like every single day. Because that's what we're supposed to become, not to do what we want to do. Many of enemies do what they want to do. Do they serve? Are they about Heavenly Holy Father's business? Of course not. They're not about God the Father's business. They don't serve Abba Father. They lie to God's people, God's children. They sell them for gold and silver. By the way, there, all these prophecies of that are in the book of Jeremiah. And what God will do to those false prophets and teachers and anyone else who loves to live a lie. As somebody calls them out there, I think they call them prophet liars, prophet liars, or liars for profit, prophet liars. Has any of you heard that name? Anyway, John 14... 16 and i will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever holy spirit can be referred to as a helper and our advocate john 14 26 but the helper the holy spirit or advocate the holy spirit whom the father meaning holy father will send in my name yeshua says he will teach you of all things and it will bring you to your remembrance all that i have already said to you says jesus john 15 26 yeshua says but when the helper comes whom i will send to you from the father the spirit of the truth who's the spirit of the truth who proceeds from the father he will bear witness about me okay acts 1 8 but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all the Ju judea and samaria and to the end of the earth okay Okay, then you have Acts chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, Acts 2, 33. You know what? That's a good verse to know it exists. 
being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, it speaks here of Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew, He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Acts 2.38, how do you receive, the, what is the protocol to receive the Holy Spirit? Do you know what it is? And Peter said to them, quote, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift of Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Acts 4.31 <laughs> Acts 5.32. This is a very crucial imperative to comprehend that where it says that the Holy Spirit is given for obedience. There should be another verse in the book of John. But he, let's, let's go over this real quick one. And we are witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. Acts 9.31 Acts 10.47 Acts 11.15 Acts 13.2 Acts 19, verse 5 to 6, by the way, in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, Holy Spirit says specifically to Barnabas and Saul. Do you see how the Holy Spirit is calling the shots, is giving orders? For and all of you out there who proclaim that you don't think Holy Spirit gives orders. So I, I, people who think that they can trick the Holy Spirit, well, I ask for the Holy Spirit, now I can go do wickedness, and they go teach disgusting things. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't take Holy Spirit for someone who, as if, remember, it's God's Spirit, Yahweh's Spirit, Yeshua's Spirit. I'll tell you this way, okay, because I'm tippy-toeing because it's the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven speaking against the holy spirit is uh, is the unforgivable offense speaking with maliciousness against the holy spirit is an unforgivable offense one can even lie to someone who is uh, considered god's appointed anointed messenger and holy spirit remember what happened with peter simon it's terrifying to me it's not a bad message, but it's a warning to our enemies. Don't lie. Don't be around us lying. When, we, when, Because God, it's not what we will do. It's what the Holy Spirit that's over this earth, in the earth, that testifies with the water and the blood, that's in us and upon us can do. It will not tolerate perversions. It will not tolerate lies, deviancies of any kind against God's children and against the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because that's why you and I receive the Holy Spirit sealed that's how, why we can communicate with Heavenly Holy Father and Yeshua Jesus we only have one example of that where Holy Spirit is all a, a judge and here in Acts chapter 13 verse 2 we have an example when Holy Spirit gives an order do such and such. I have appointed these two or set these two apart to perform such and such missions. What are, it was about Saul and Barnabas. So people, remember, you need to guys remember how powerful Holy Spirit is. He's in anything and everything. We know not much about it. Not much about it. But we have to, we have to embrace who Yeshua is first and then who the Holy Spirit is, studying who the Holy Spirit is, studying what the Holy Spirit seal is, and it will change your life. But please make a note of that. 
more. Acts chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Then Romans 5, 5, very important verse. Let's read it. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 8, 26. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. By having Holy Spirit, you will always abound in hope. Hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Holy the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are Yahuwah's God the Father's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 to 20, Similar verse Slightly differently worded Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought with a price so glorify God in your body Hallelujah! Praise be to you, Shua Jesus. Do you glorify God in your body? You know, just for the record, I do everything I can to glorify God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, with my mouth, through my deeds. If I don't feel like doing something, uh, he told me long ago, you know, unless you truly want to do it, don't do it. Because he rather us do things with dedication and love. Because I, we have to uh, re- look at ourselves as wherever we go. We represent God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son. And everything can be an opportunity to bring someone closer. Whether by sowing a seed. And to literally bring them back to the covenant. And sowing seeds. You know our Lord. He sows where no one, where no one goes. So remember, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus if they don't scatter God's people. Okay? You know, leave it alone. Talk to God, pray to God that something ends or pray for resolution. In other cases, maybe for justice. But um, overall, leave it alone because we want as many saved. uh, We want everyone. I want everyone to be saved because many people will find out that they were lied to, that they were living a strong delusion. Second Corinthians 3.17, very important verse, and the rest I'll give it to you quickly. You can look the rest of it up. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Did you hear that? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Mental, physical, spiritual, freedom. Freedom spiritually, first and foremost, mentally, spiritually, and physically. You have a freedom. Physically, maybe sometimes not so much, but mentally and spiritually, because you are temples of the Most High Yahweh, God Almighty's temples. You are purchased with a price. It's called blood of Jesus this is why that spirit of prophecy you're asking for it and then that whole process is so crucial to study to experience to go through it will get you so much closer to our heavenly Holy father who will see how much you really care for his son jesus yeshua and he it will take you to new heights it will take you to freaking new heights sorry about that but it's true okay second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 Galatians 5, 22, 23, where it tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And again, such things, there is no law. Remember what I said earlier, you put yourself under the law, that old law, that old covenant, you Gentiles, love, sin, and death. You know, the 613 laws that some of you out there are, went back to obey. For what? You never knew that covenant. But what for? What for? You place yourself under because you cannot choose and pick. You have to do them all now. And you violate one, you violate them all. Where there is is no law, neither is there a violation. Where there's no violation, there's no wrath of God. So don't place yourself under the wrath of God. Because other people are tricking so many people out there by making them 
uh, what appears to be very godly, very um, p- uh, pious, dedicated to God the Father, always about the God the Father, God the Father, occasional Yeshua here, Yeshua there. But they self-impose. This isn't in the scriptures. This is not in the covenant of grace. We were saved by grace through faith. Again, you get the point. You already heard this many times. Again, warning Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of the redemption. Titus 3.5. He saved us not because of wor- wor- of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to Jesus. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty one. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of a man, but men spoke from God, as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And again, we have Jude chapter 20 and then read chapter 21. I love you, brothers and sisters. Praise be to Jesus. Yeshua Mashiach loves you. He's for you, not against you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember, brothers and sisters, that some things we have to hear many, many times before we even understand them, before we comprehend them. I know I had to be like that about the Holy Spirit about the Spirit of God as God the Father, about what's written in the book of Revelation to the message of the seven angels of the seven churches and its uh, people because all of it is important to understand because some people, they think they hear, but they don't. I thought I heard by the time I read Isaiah 28 or the book of Revelation and I was like, well, I don't get it. Let me set aside and I would read it again. And I said, well, I don't see really anything special in it other than there's much repentance to do. So I knew to repent right away for all seven, the, all the corrections for all seven churches, for all seven angels of the seven churches. I did that right away. And then I decided to read the scriptures of the book of Revelation, you know, those seven messages to the seven churches. And I did word for word. And I was starting to make excuses why I haven't died and done something. <laughs> and... But I was quickly stopped and I realized that he just wanted me to follow an order. So if you're still listening to this, whatever you think, if you think you've done any of those things, please, I will do everything it says in there for correction. So then and repentance. So then you can ask for all the gifts of the of uh, for all seven angels of the seven churches. Uh, why not? And that's what I was commanded to tell you. So I'm telling you this again, which is in my other longer video. I love you. I'll talk to you later.